Hi, it's Michael from BMX. BMX and ISA decided to put together this video to show you how to calibrate this RTD temperature transmitter. Calibrating RTD transmitter is not that difficult. There are basically two options. One is, it looks like this, you've got a temperature element connected to the transmitter. This is an RTD probe, it's a four wire RTD and we've, we've got it connected. All we need to do right now obviously connect our um, you know, 420 measurement power loop, this transmitter, to get it working. You would normally put that probe into the bath, into the block, um, heat it up, and then you will see the 420 output changing. But sometimes that's not possible to actually remove the probe and put it in the bath. What can you do instead? Well, you could actually simulate resistance to the transmitter and therefore you can you can see the 4 to 20 out changing we're going to do that later in this video so i'm going to show you how to do that but before we jump there let me just connect my calibrator to my transmitter so you can actually see what the 4 to 20 output is so let's go to a calibrator let's connect and measure milliamps so i'm going to be supplying 24 volts into the transmitter and measuring 4 to 20 as well so let me just do that now Okay, so one lead and the second lead there. Right, so it looks as if we've got some live reading. We've got 7.63, 7.62 milliamps output from that transmitter. So right now, if we were to, um, you know, to touch and change, uh, you know, the temperature, if you put it in the, um, you know, a, a bath, a, a ice, bucket of ice, anything like that, obviously that, that temperature would change uh, and the milliamps would change. We can actually also see if we scale that 4 to 20 milliamps output to 0 to 100 uh, Celsius degrees, we can actually have the Celsius degrees as a scaled value as well. So you can see you can, you can do that. And if you put that again in, the, in a bath or anything like that, that would change. So what I'm going to do now, is disconnect this probe from the transmitter. We're going to disconnect everything. We're just going to connect the leads back to the, the to the calibrator, and you will see how we can actually do the calibration using the documented calibrator and simulating the RTD. The probe is now going to be disconnected from the transmitter, and we are going to connect our sets of leads, and then subsequently connect this transmitter to a uh, to a calibrator. So at this point, this is a four wire. Um, RTD uh, temperature element, so we're going to disconnect that. And uh, by the way, whistling here is optional. You don't have to whistle, but you can if you want. Right, so the temperature element is off. Right now, quickly explaining what can we see here. Um, this is a normal sort of 4 to 20 RTD um, temperature transmitter. You can see right now that the resistor is, is here between 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. Uh, so that's how we're going to connect our test leads. You can see 4 to 20, so this is where the power lead is going to go into and this is where uh, we're going to read the 4 to 20. So let's connect our test leads. So the red one's going to go to one side of the resistor and the black one's going to go to the other. Okay, all we have to do right now is, uh, obviously we connected the four wire and the four test leads, we're gonna connect them into the document and calibrator, but we also wanna connect right now the, uh, the power lead. So we're gonna do that now. So this is gonna provide a loop power to the transmitter and also gonna measure four to 20 in the same time. Okay. So we're ready to connect um, our test leads to our calibrator. So all we're going to do is go to RTD simulation and we're going to connect the test leads as shown on this picture. Okay. So let's see if we simulate zero, what's the uh, 4 to 20 output. Okay, it seems as if the, um, the output is working okay. So 
at this stage, we could just you know, carry on with the calibration using our test equipment. Um, but what we're going to do is go to a documenting calibrator and we want to carry on with the paperless calibration. And we actually set up one just here um, now, which is 0 to 100, 4 to 20 on the output. We've got everything connected. All we have to press right now is start and the calibrator is going to simulate um, the resistance to the transmitter so it can actually uh, you know, give us a 4 to 20 output. Um, there'll be five calibration points uh, going up and down. You can see the blue tolerance lines. These are the pass and fail criteria. We set it to 0.5 of a percent of span. Um, so it looks as if um, all of our points are going to be outside of that. Uh, so that's going to mean um, a, a failed calibration. But we'd have to do something about it if we want to bring it back to spec. You can also see the, uh, the red dots uh, this is just an indication that those points are outside of our tolerance. Uh, you can see also here that there are the calibration points um, that um, the calibrator is going to simulate and 4 to 20 output is going uh, to be measured. Okay, so this is our failed calibration. It looks as if uh, we have done 075 uh, percent of span error, so this is obviously a greater error than we anticipated. It's uh, 150% significant error, which means that we are obviously outside of our tolerance. Uh, this value is very important um, because it shows us where we are in terms of our tolerance. Um, we could put a, a, any information about it, why it failed, if we know why it has happened. Uh, but you can see the graph, you can see the numbers behind the graph. Um, now we would have to save this. This is our s found calibration. Um, we could also right now finish and go and, and leave it as it is, but we, we don't want to leave a failed calibration. So we're going to save it as found and we're going to right now try to bring it back to spec uh, and do another calibration as left. This is a hard transmitter. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our communicator that is built in here to actually communicate and trim the, the sensor. Um, what you could do alternatively, if that's not a hard, um, there would be usually a zero in the span screws and you would have to uh, just go about and try to find and adjust um, to get the correct settings. But here we're just going to use our heart communicator, so let me show you how to do that. Um, we just start the communication. So right now the heart uh, built-in modem here is going to communicate to our transmitter. It's going to give us um, some options here, tag, tags and, uh, and the ranges, but we're not interested in that. We would like to trim that transmitter. So we're going to go to diagnostic and service, we're going to go to sensor trim, and we're going to go to two-point trim. We recommend do, doing two-point trim um, because you want to do a lower and the upper trim. Um, we're also going to do the analog trimming. Uh, there is going to be graphic shown here somewhere, so you can just have a look at why we're doing both, but they are in series, so we have to do both. Okay, we're just following the instructions as they are displayed here on the screen. You just click OK and click to another instruction. You can see right now that at the moment it's zero, it sits just below zero. So we're going to copy this value into this cell by just clicking that number one there. And you click OK. And it's asking us to apply the high um, the value. Right now we know that the high value was 100. So we're going to do that. And again, as soon as it's stable, you click OK. If you follow the instruction, you click OK again. And again, you copy information from box number one into, into the sensor. And you can see right now how milliamps quickly trimmed. So it looks as if we are onto something good here. So let's just go up and let's just do the analog trim as well. Again, we follow the instructions set by our um, by our DD files into the in the, it's inside the transmitter. Okay, it sets the um, transmitter to four milliamps. We again copy the value. We agree that we've seen four milliamps, and we follow the instructions as we were before. You copy the value from box number two into it. You click OK. 
And yes, I can see the 20 milliamps. It looks as if we trimmed uh, both digital and analog. Let's go back to our test and we're ready to do the S left calibration now. Let me just check at 100. We seem around 20 milliamps, it's okay. What happens if I uh, go to the lower end? You can see we had zero reading now at 4 milliamps. We're happy with that. So let's hit start. So you can see right now the transmitter is going to simulate the RTD into, um, into it and it's going to read the 4 to 20 out. You can see steps is going to go 5 step up, 5 step down. You can see the step size here. Um, this actually is a very good time to talk about calibrators itself, the test equipment. What does it make, what does it make test equipment, test equipment? It, two things. One, it needs to be more accurate, probably four times more accurate than the unit on the test. That's one thing. Second thing, it needs to be traceable, it needs to be in date. So it needs to be traceable to national standards, so we need to send it to Calibrations Lab for traceability. Um, those two things are, are, are critical and most important when we actually talking about test equipment. We need to always bear that in mind. You can see our calibration is on the way. It slowly goes through those five point up and five point down. You can see next point is 50. It waits eight seconds actually to get the stable reading and then it um, sort of captured that value there and then. Okay, so it looks as if we are well in tolerance as opposed to previously when we were 150% significant error out, we only 20% significant error right now. So we reduced that massively. You can see it's a past calibration. We, uh, we obviously trimmed it, that's why we, we got there. You can see we can put information about who did the calibration and any calibration notes. You can see the graph, so you can, you can pretty much uh, say here that we are well within tolerance. So that's all good. We can save this calibration. We can actually do save this calibration as left. We can also combine this with the previous results if that was the case. And we can just save it. And there you have it. That's how you calibrate RTD transmitter using a calibrator, documented calibrator. We've just completed calibrating this RTD temperature transmitter. All we have to do right now is disconnect all the cables and put it back into the process. So I have to connect back the probe. Thank you so much for watching. And for more videos like this, please see our YouTube channel.